In this video, I'm going to talk about approximation. So that will be the focus of this video. I'm going to start with significant figures. So what do we mean by significant figures? If you were asked to convert a given number to, let's say, two significant figures, what does it mean and how do you go about that? So I'm going to start with an example. So let's say we have 135 and we are asked to convert this to one significant figure, right? To one significant figure. I'm going to use SF for a short form of significant figure. So if you're asked to do this, what does it imply? What this imply is you should try to represent this number in such a way that only the first significant number is shown why the rest should be represented as zero. So now what does this mean in reality? So this is what it means. If I'm to write this answer, it means you have to take the first non-zero. So what do we mean by significant figure? It means non-zero, right? You know, when you say something is significant, it means it is not zero, it is not empty. So we have looked for the first non-zero, starting from the left-hand side towards the right-hand side, right? So what is the first non-zero you can see here? It is one. That's the first non-zero. Then what's the next thing to do? The next thing to do here is to turn the rest into zeros. But before you do that, you need to ask yourself, do you need to round this up or not? Because when you perform significant, when you combine about two significant figures, you might want to perform some rounding. Uh, we, we need to round off the number. So in this case, we need to check if we need to round this off. Now to check for that, you need to look at the next number after this one. The next number after one is three. Now, is three equal to or greater than five? No. So in this case, we are not going to increase this one. So we're going to write the answer like this. So this is the answer if being asked if asked to convert 135 to one significant figure. So why do we perform this operation? We do this in order to reduce numbers in such a way that we can easily interpret or we can easily express the the the, the level of accuracy or precision of a number. So let's look at more examples here. So I'm going, to, I'm going to list out the rules as I go through some examples. So let's look at it from these two angles. Let's deal with numbers without decimal uh, parts, without decimal points, right? Then let's also look at examples where we have decimal points. So if you are asked to convert the following into, so let's say we have 2, 5, 7, 8. We need to convert this to three significant figure, right? Then let's look at another example here, which is seven, four, five, zero, one. We want to convert this to two significant figure. Then number three, we want to convert something like this. That's one, two, five, two, two, significant figure. So let's take these three examples. So now we'll convert 2578 to three significant figures. So what do we do here? We count from the left. One, two, three. So what are so this is the three significant non-zero digits, right? So you write two five zero at two five seven. Now you want to check should I increase this seven by one? Or not. So how do you determine that? You look at the next number after this third non third significant figure. So if you check this seven, the next number is eight. Now is eight greater than five? Yes. And because it's greater than five, they're going to round this off to eight. So you add one to this seven to make it eight. Then the rest of the digits you convert to zero. So this is the answer to the first question. So let's take a look at the second question. So we have to convert this to two significant figures. So what that implies is you count one, two, starting from the left. So that's seven, four, five, 
before, right? Then you ask yourself, do I need to increase this four by one or should I leave it this way? So you check the number that follows four. The number that follows four is five. And since we have a number that is, great, that is greater than or equal to five, we increase this by one and that becomes five. So we create this by one, that becomes five. Then the rest of the digits, you convert to zero. So this is how you express this number to two significant figures. Then number three, here we have one to five to two significant figures. So here you, you are going to ask yourself, how many, we have, we have the first two significant digits, one, two, right? One and two. So then the next thing you ask yourself, should I increase two? Look at the number after two. The number after two is five. Since it's up to five, you increase this by one. So this becomes three, right? And then the last thing becomes zero. So that is how you convert numbers into significant figures. But there's something I need to mention, which is how do you round off? You round off the last significant digit if it is greater or equal to five. Although there are other ways to round off, there are other criteria to, that you can use to round off. For instance, for this example, we have one to five. There, are, if you have the, 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 the digit that follows this second significant figure, if you have it to be five, there are times that there are other methods to, that can be used. There are two ways to round off a number. We have for this kind of situation. We call this kind of situation a kind of situation where you need to break break, break a tie. In this situation, we are trying to break a tie because the third digit, which is what will determine whether we should increase these two or not, the third digit is five, and there's no other digit that follows it. That is, we don't have any other non-zero digit that follows this five. In order, in this, this is a special case where the digit that determines whether you should add or not is five, and nothing follows it. There is nothing like one that follows it or two or not zero that follows it. So in this kind of situation, there are, there are two ways people generally round off. The first approach is what I just did, which, which is known as round half away from zero. Then we have another method called round half to even. Well, I'm not going to talk about this, but the point I'm trying to express here is this is the method that you should use for, for your exams. So what that means is even if you have a case where you need to break a tie, always go with the option of adding one to the next number, which is two, to break the tile. Okay, let's move on to the next to the next concept, which is how do we perform, how do we convert a number to significant figures when we've got decimal numbers? So let's take a look. So for decimal numbers, let's look at some examples. So if, if you have a number like 0 0.0376 and you are asked to convert to two significant figures. So let's take a look at this other example. 0 0.0005132. Let's convert to 5, 2, 3 significant figures. And here you have one, two point five six one. We'll convert this to three significant figures. Then lastly, we have one eight seven dot zero seven nine. We'll convert this to four significant figures. So how do you go about this? So let's take the first one. Now to convert the first one to 
two significant figures. You count, you start counting from the first non-zero. So take, take a look at this. You can't count from this because this is zero. You can't start from here because this is zero. So this is the beginning of the first significant figure. So you count one, two, right? But then you're going to still write this as 0, 0.0, then three and your seven, right? But, but then we want to round it off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check the next number. The next number is six. And since six is more than five, is equal to more than five, we're going to increase this seven by one. So this becomes eight. And you can leave out the rest as zero. You don't need to write leading zero. When it comes to decimal, you don't need to put zero, zero. It's not necessary in the case of uh, where you're in the decimal region right because it doesn't make any difference but if you're in the whole number region it's important to convert the rest of the digit to zero but here you don't need to do that so then for the second answer here we have 0, 0.0 so we have, we have to convert to three significant figures so here you, you start counting from five this is the first non zero that you're going to find starting from the left so you're going to count one two three so you're going to write 0, 0.000 and five one three then the next decision i want to make is what is the next digit that follows uh three right the next digit that follows three is two and since two is not to five you don't increase this in any way so you leave the answer as this then number three let's convert this to three significant figures so what you do here is you count from the left one two three right and since you've got one that's what 12.5. The next thing is you want to round off. So you check the next number. This is six, it's up to five. It's more than five. So here you're going to increase this five by one, and this becomes six. Then you just remove the rest of the digits. Then number four, you have four significant figures. So you count one, two, three, four. Then that gives you note that I counted this zero because. I've already started the counting. You don't skip the zero. You only skip zero when you have not started, you have not seen any non-zero. But once you start counting, even if you have zero, you're going to include that because it's part of the digit now. So here you have 187 points. Now you have zero, right? But then you want to check, do you need to round it up, uh, up or not? So in this case, we we'll check the next number seven is more than five so we're going to add one to this and this becomes your answer so that is basically how you random so let's look at this other example so let's say you have an example like this so let's say you have 1.9964 and you have to convert to three significant figures right so what do you do here so here you look at the first three non zero, right? So that's one nine nine, right? So here you have one point nine nine, right? Then you look at this number, this is six. Because this is six, you're going to add one to the previous number, which is nine. If you add one to this nine, you're going to get one. If you add one here, you're going to get ten. So you write zero, you carry one to this, right? then you have 10 as well, then you carry one here. Then eventually this becomes two. So the answer becomes 2.00. You're going to retain this, even though these are zeros, but because you want to indicate that this is three significant figures, that that is what, this is the outcome of the three significant figures. We are going to retain this. Okay, so let's take a look at one more example then we'll move to the next concept so let's say you have a a, a question like this 7.52 and then you're asked to convert this to four significant figure right so you're going to count one two three right 7.52 and since you were asked to convert to four significant figures and you don't have up to four digits you simply add zero to, to this. So that is how you convert this to first significant figure. If you don't have enough digits, just include zero and that's it. And that's basically how you 
you know, express this. But if you are dealing with um, if you are dealing with whole number, you can't add zero. You can't add zero at the back. Otherwise, you are going to get a completely different result. If you are dealing with a, a number like this, so let's say you are dealing with a number like this, right? So four significant figure. In this case, you are going to express this as zero will be in front because this is not a decimal number. So the zero will be in front, not at the back. Or you can express it like this. You can express it like this. Seven, five, two point zero. So any of this will, will be valid, but you can't have it like this. This will be wrong. Okay, so that is how you convert a number to whatever significant figures that you want to. So let's talk about decimal places. Now we'll talk about decimal places. So to convert a number to, to let's say one or two decimal places is another way to approximate a number. So let's take a look at this example. So let's say you are asked to convert 0 0.718 to 2 decimal places, right? So you are asked to convert this to two decimal places. What does it mean? So what this means is you should, in this case, you, you are not going to start from the first non-zero per se. You're going to start from the first digit after the decimal point. So that's how you approximate using decimal places. So you, you're going to look at this decimal point and say, okay, what is the first digit after this decimal point? That's this. So you're going to write, note that you're not going to touch the whole number part, the integer part. So you're going to, whatever the integer part is, you're going to represent it that way. Then, since we are converting to two decimal places, you're going to write this seven and one, sorry, two digits after the decimal num point, right? Then the next phase is to approximate. So the next number is more than five. So for that reason, you're going to increment this one. You're going to add one to it. So once you add one to this, you will get the seven and two. So this is the answer if you convert to two decimal places. So let's take a look at another example. So let's say you have an example like this. You have one, two points, five, four, three, right? And you're asked to convert to, let's say, one decimal place. In this case, you're not going to touch the whole number section. I just want to write them the way they are, right? Then you always say dot, that's the decimal point. Then this is the first decimal place, that's five. Then you want to approximate. Now you check what's next to five, which is four. Since four is not to five, you ignore them. In other words, you don't uh, increment five. So this is the answer. So, what about it, this example? So what if you have an example like, let's say 90 points, let's say 0079, and you are expected to convert to, uh, let's say, two decimal places, right? Now in this case, what you do is, you leave this as it is, and you have, you start counting this one, decimal place to decimal place. So now you have something like this. But then you want to check if you should increment this. So the next number is seven, which is more than five. Then for that reason, you're going to add one to this. So which means you're going to add one to this. So the answer becomes 90.01. So that is how you convert numbers to decimal places. So let's talk about the next concept, which is standard form. How do we convert a number to a standard form? Okay, let's look at this. If you have a number like this, if you have a number like one, two, seven, eight, do you know you can write it as follows? You can say that one, two, seven, eight is equivalent to you taking one, two, one point, Two seven eight times one thousand 
So take a look at this. If you multiply 1.278 by 1000, you are going to get 1 to 7. So standard form is like a way by which you represent a number in terms of a given number times multiple of 10. So in this case, 1 with 3 zeros is 10 raised to the power of 3. So this is what standard form will represent. It represents a way by which you write a number as a combination of a particular number, which is from the original number, times multiple of 10. So the idea here is this. The first set of numbers will be similar to the original number, but this time around, you are going to put a dot in front of the first digit. So you, you have a dot in front of the first digit. Then you multiply by the number of times you need to move to put that dot there. So just imagine the dot, there's a dot at the back of this number. If you move one, two, three, we need to move three times to get this dot from the very from the back of this eight to the first digit here. So for that reason, you only have three zeros, which is 10 raised to power three. So let's look at another example. So let's say I have an example like this. I have maybe one, nine, five, six, then you have three. And you are asked to convert this to standard form. So what you basically do is you, you assume that there's a, there's a kind of decimal point after this three, right? If you can't see any decimal point, then assume it is after the last digit. So count how many times you need to move, and that's four. That's one, two, three, four, right? So if the answer becomes 1.9563 times 10 raised to the power of 4. So this is how you represent this number in standard form. So what about decimal numbers? How do we represent them in standard form? So let's take a look at this example. So let's say I have a number like this, 1. So let's use 8, 5, 6, point, 7, 6, right? Now, how do you represent this in standard form? So, since we've got our dot here, it's visible, right? You count how many times you need to move this dot to the first, to behind the first digit. So that's one, two, right? Then that becomes eight point five six, then seven six times ten raised to the power of two. Okay. So what about when you have a number like this? So what about this three points seven? One. So because we don't have anywhere to move to, you just write it as 3.71 times 10 raised to the power of 0. Because we are not moving anywhere. There's no movement. So it's 10 raised to the power of 0. And 10 raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this is how we represent this one in standard form. So let's take a look at one more example. So what if you have a number like this? 0.00001795. Three, six, two. So how do you represent this in standard form? Because the decimal is on the, because we are moving from left to right. You know, so far we have been moving from right to left. If you are moving from right to left, the power will be positive. If you are moving from left to right, it will be negative. So let's take a look. So this one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to have 1.79362 times 10 raised to the power of minus 5. So that is how you represent this scenario where you have a lot of zeros before a, a number that is non zero, right? So this is how you represent a number in standard form. So now we'll talk about the next concept, which is percentage error. Now let's talk about percentage error. So the first thing to explain is error, because before we talk about percentage error, we need to understand what error means. So let's say you've got a particular object. Let's, let's say this is a wood, right? This is a wood. And let's say in reality, the actual length of this wood Let's say the actual length of this wood is 4.5 centimeters. But let's say 
I asked you to measure it and you measured it. So the measured length here happens to be, let's say you eventually told me 4.3 centimeters. That was what you told me. But let's say in reality, like if we actually did it right, let's say the actual length is 4.5, but you got measurements of 4.3, maybe because you are not careful enough. So if I ask you, what is the error made? The error made here is the difference between the actual length, right? The actual length minus the measured length. So that's error. So in this case, if you take the difference, you're going to get 0 0.2 0 .2 centimeter. That is the error. So error is basically a difference between the real measurement and the calculated or the measured figure. So if you take the difference between what is real and what you measure, you call that error. It doesn't matter what concept you are dealing with. That is what error is. It's difference between a true value and the measured value. Okay. So what about percentage error? So percentage error is just an extension of error. So if I ask what is percentage error, percentage error is simply error divided by the actual thing, you understand? The actual measurements, right? Times 100%, basically, that's, that's it. The way you calculate percentage of anything, that's the same way you, can, you calculate percentage error. You take the error, you divide by the actual measurement, then times 100%. So this is what percentage error represents. So if you, in this particular example, the percentage error will be 0 0.2 divided by the actual measurement, which is 4.5, then times 100%. So let's calculate this. If we calculate this, we're going to get 4.4%. So that is the percentage error. So that's what percentage error is, irrespective of what you are measuring. It's always the error divided by the actual measurement times 100%. So now we're going to look at some past questions and explore some questions and apply some of the things we've learned. So let's take a look. Let's solve some past questions. We are going to start with some UTME past questions. So I'm going to look at a question search. On that question search, I'm going to select maths, then we are going to search for significant figures and decimal decimal places. So this will enable us extra questions related to significant figures and decimal places. So I'm going to pick question, I'm going to look at jump question, 2001 question 7. So that's this, 2001 question 7. So this question states that we should convert, we should evaluate 0 0.14 raised to power 2 times 0 0.275 divided by 7 times 0 0.02 and we should correct the result to three decimal places. So three decimal places, right? So what do we do here? We're going to solve this without the use of calculator. So let's take a look at how we could go about this. So the first one I do is to write this out in this format. 0 0.14 squared can be written as 0 0.14 times 0 0.14, then times 0 0.275, then divided by 7 times 0 0.02. Okay, what we want to do here is to make it easier, we can write this as multiples of 10. What I mean is this, we can remove this decimal by taking it as we want to, right? So it's removed twice from left to right, right? It means we're going to save 14 times 10 raised to the power of minus 2, then times 
14 times 10 to the power of minus 2. Then times, in this case, I'm going to move 3 times. 1, 2, 3. So that's 2, 7, 5. Then times 10 is by minus 3. Divided by 7 times. In this case, we're going to do the same 1, 2. So that's 2 times 10 is by minus 2. So let's see what we can cut. 7 can cut 2. So they have 14. That's 2. Then 2 can cut this 2, right? Then this whole 10 is by minus 2 can cut the whole of 10 is by minus 2. So I'm going to be left with 14 times 10 is by minus 2. Then times 2, 7, 5 times 10 is the power of minus 3. So we can use different ways to solve this. But one strategy we can simply or easily use is to simply convert them back to, to, to the original form, which is 0 0.14 times 0 0.257. Then we use calculator to solve this. And if you use calculator to solve this, you're going to get the following. So you're going to get 0 0.0385. So note that this 0 0.275, so there's a slight error here. So the answer is still 0 0.0385. So this is the answer. Now to convert to three decimal places, you count one, two, three, right? So you have 0 0.038, right? But because the last digit, next digit is five, we're going to increase this by one. So that becomes 0 0.0. And that means the correct answer is option E. Option E is the correct answer. So let's look at another question. So this time I will look at question number four of 2008. So in this question, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have to convert to three significant figures, right? So as we learned earlier, you just count from the first non-zero digit, which is one, two, three. You have one, two, three. Then you check, is this number up to five? No, because not to five, you are not going to increase this. You will leave this like this. Then you convert the rest to zero. So this is the answer. And the answer and the correct option here is option A. So let's look at another question. So this time around, we'll be looking at Question number four from the year 2012. So in this case, we have, in this case, we have 21 over nine, that convert to three significant figures. So what we do here, let's first evaluate this. So if you try to evaluate this three in nine, that will give you three, three in 21, that will give you seven. Then if you express seven over three as a fraction, as a decimal rather, you're going to get three in seven, that's two. Then you have two or number one over three, right? So which you can write as 2.333 and so on, right? So since we are to convert to three decimal places, we have to count the first three, one, two, three, right? So in this case, that's 2.33. Then you check, is the next digit up to five? No, because it's not up to five. You leave your answer as 2.33. And that means the right option is option D. So let's take a look at another example. But this time around, we are going to be looking at questions from, from WAS. So let's take a look at this question. In the case of WAS, we are going to go to question search and we are going to pick mathematics. Then we are going to search for questions related to at, uh, this time around, we're going to search for question related to percentage error. So we want to solve question related to percentage error. So let's take a look. So we're going to look at question number 42 under year 20, 2002, right? So this question says you should calculate correct to two significant figures, the percentage error in approximating 0. 375 in approximately 0 0.375 to 0 0.4 and we are to correct the whole thing to two significant figure so the first question is we should get a percentage error 
Then the next phase is for us to correct the results to two significant figures. So the first thing to get is the error. To get the error, error is the actual measurement, right? The actual measurement minus the minus the calculated measurement. Although it could also be the calculated measurement minus actual measurement. So it's it all about which is greater. So the first question was asked, which one is the actual, which one is the calculated? So if you take a look at this, what happened was, this happens to be the actual, but it was approximated to this. So the question is now, what error have we made by taking this actual measurement and assuming it to be this? So this is the actual, this is the calculated. But note that error can also be calculated minus actual. So what I mean is, if we take AC, AM rather, to be actual measurement, and we have CM as calculated measurement, this is what error is all about. So you could also write it this way. You could also say calculated measurement minus actual measurement. So it doesn't matter which comes first. So in this case, now we just take the big, the, the, the one that is bigger to be the uh, the one that comes first. So 0 0.4 minus 0 0.375. So this is the error. And if you take this difference, you're going to get 0 0.025. So the next is to calculate the percentage error, which is the error divided by actual. So this is where it's important to know what the actual is. The actual measurement is what it ought to be, which is 0 0.375, but then we approximated it to be this. So which means the actual is 0 0.375 then times 100%. So that's how you calculate percentage error. If you do this calculation, you're going to get the following as your answer. So this will give you 6.666 and so on, right? The 6 is a recurring, is a recurring 6, right? So this will give you the answer. This is the answer. But then we were asked to convert to two significant figures. So I wrote write the first six, right? Then dot the next six, which is second significant figure. Then we ask ourselves, is this up to six? Yes, it's up to six. Or is it more than five, rather? It's more than five. And um, what we do is, in this case, is we increase the, 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 the last figure by one, so this becomes seven. So basically the answer is 6.7. That is our answer. So in this case, the correct option is D. So next we look at, finally, we look at question number 20 from the year 2011. So that's this question. So let's take a look. So in this question, the length of this piece of stick is the length. So we can take this as our actual measurement, right? Actual measurement is 1.75 meters. And a girl measured it as 1.8. So somebody made a mistake and calculated it as 1.8 meters. So the question is to find the percentage error. The first thing we want to do is to find the error, right? So the error is different between the actual and the measured just take the bigger one here, the minus the smaller one, right? If you do this, you're going to get 0 point. If you take the difference, 0 0.05, that's the error. So what about the percentage error? The percentage error is the error, right? Divided by the actual measurement, which is 1.75 times 100%. So if you do this calculation, you're going to get the following as your answer. 2.857%. So this is the answer you're going to get, but in case you want to represent it as fraction, so what you are going to do here is, instead of converting it to decimal, into to decimal, you, you leave the answer as fraction, and in that case, you're going to have zero points. You're going to have this times 100 divided by 1.75, which is 
which will give you 5 over 1.75 and that is so you say 5 here 1 5 here you get 0 points in 1 is 0 then it's 17 that's 3 then you have 2 so in 25 that's 5 so it's equated to 1 over 0 0.35 and if you multiply both sides by 100 you are going to get 100 over 35 and you can divide further by 5 and that will give you 5 here is 7 then 5 in 100 is 20 so eventually you have 20 over 7 so this is another way you can represent the answer and that means the correct option is option D so this brings us to the end of uh, approximation and uh, check out the next video for other topics.